today we're going to be talking about some of the tankiest marches that you can build in rise of kingdoms what's going on guys cheers first let's talk about what i mean by a tanky march right i think this video is going to appeal mostly to new players in rise of kingdoms so a tanky march is just like your standard tank in any other rpg mmo things along those lines where the role of the tank is to absorb damage right they want to get aggro from a target they want to get the attention of a target and be the punching bag up front so that way the other units can deal damage to the enemy you know it's part of the holy trinity of rpgs right you think of dps or damage per second that's the unit that deals the most damage so in rise of kingdoms you can think of somebody like guan yu for example who would be high dps or uh isong ye is a high dps commander because they just have huge skill damage uh, and then there's richard who is a tanky commander right he doesn't really deal that much damage but he reduces the damage that he takes and also heals himself and his units so that way he can stay in the fight for longer now as rise of kingdoms has aged there's been less emphasis on building a pure tanky march at least for the pvp aspect of rise of kingdoms and we'll talk about that maybe a little bit later in the video but if there's less of an emphasis on tanky marches then why am i making this video well i think one of the things that some of the older players in rise of kingdoms forget is just how important having at least one very tanky march is in rise of kingdoms so for example let me go ahead and show you some of the events here in the game this is a full list of well maybe not a full list but a list of most of the the events here in the game and a ton of these events um give you a ton of value if you have a tanky march that can tank a lot of the damage so for example low harsh trial you're going to be chaining barbarians right which means killing a ton of barbarians without having to go back to your city and waste time that's a great use for a tank arms training lohar you may want to have a tanky army there as well you can take a look at some of the events like karak ceremony or you can take a look at events like golden kingdom or ian's ballads or Ceroli crisis or shadow legion right shadow legion you'll want to tank for your garrison for your wall but you can even look at like champions of olympia for example you might want to use a tank there or you might want to use a tank for sunset canyon you might want to use a tank for later expedition levels these are things that older players forget that having a tank is really good for right this last level has a very high single damage uh, single damage enemy in the form of Genghis Khan with Saladin right it's gonna deal a ton of single target damage and if you don't have t5s and a tanky March this level 80 might be pretty hard for you to do so there's still a ton of reasons why you may want to have at least one tanky March at your disposal here in rise of kingdoms now I do just want to have a quick disclaimer okay we're not necessarily talking about city defense okay they are similar but they're not really the same thing and before we jump into some of the commanders that I want to talk about here in the video about 80 percent of you guys are not subscribed to the channel so I don't know what it is okay maybe I haven't earned your sub yet but go down there and click that button you can always unsub later if you're tired of seeing my content and with that being said let's jump right into some of the most tanky commanders in the game first we're going to talk about Richard the first because this is sort of the first mega tanky commander that we saw in the game alongside Charles Martel and of course that as a pairing is typically seen as like the holy grail of tankiest marches in the game whether that's necessarily true or not it's hard to say but it is definitely probably the oldest and that's for sure and one of the reasons that I expertised Richard a long time ago is because I saw just how tanky a Richard Charles March was in Ark of Osiris oh, Osiris oh, Osiris since then that March has sort of fallen from grace and again we'll talk about that later but what makes Richard so tanky he's got healing on his primary skill this is one of the most iconic if not the most iconic healing skill in the entire game second maybe only to Zenobia and also it reduces the enemy's damage by 30 percent so that's another form of tankiness right it's not increasing his defensive capabilities it's reducing the offensive capabilities of the enemy which is pretty much just as good he also has damage taken reduction of upwards of 20 percent if he's expertise or 15 percent he also reduces the counterattack damage that he takes he also gives you infantry defense which is really really nice more healing effect here and he has the defense and infantry trees now infantry is really seen as the tanky unit right if you want to tank damage infantry is sort of the best at that and that's usually why we see a um a, an infantry garrison meta that's usually what we're what we're typically in this is a pretty tanky build that I built here I went all the way up to desperate elegy with three points you could tank take this point out of defense if you wanted to and put it over here but I made a point to grab balance which reduces the damage taken by three percent reducing skill damage that you take also increasing the rage that you get for your normal attacks getting as much health as I can over here grabbing hold the line which gives you 
reducing uh, enemy damage taken by 20 percent which is really nice and that's pretty much what I went with here now we did mention Martel and Martel is sort of the uh gold key cousin of Richard that's the way that I kind of see it he doesn't heal but he does have a shield that absorbs damage so it's a similar mechanic although definitely not the same and he also more importantly gives you 40 percent of defensive stats he gives you 20 percent health 20 percent defense now this is when he's expertise if he's not it's still a solid 30 percent of those defensive stats which is nice and he elevates his own counterattack damage by 30 percent which means it sort of punishes the enemy a little bit if they decide to really focus on Charles Martel because he's going to be dealing more of that counterattack damage back at them same talent trees as Richard so you can sort of build him the same way if you wanted to next I want to talk about Alex and I think there's a misconception about Alex people think that Alex is a tanky commander when in reality he's not that tanky you can see he doesn't have the defense tree here so that's a kind of a downside for him but also um he's focused mainly on infantry attack right that's mainly what he gives here and even on his fourth skill um this gives you usually attack um there will be defense during the uh, you, the four seconds where his shield is active but unless you have a sort of rage engine behind Alex roughly 60 percent of the time it's going to be uh, attack right so he doesn't have that many defensive stats uh even though he does have a similar shield as Martel and also gives shields to your other units so some tanky elements with Alexander but I wouldn't really use him as a tank he's better off maybe as a secondary to a tank so you could do like Richard Alex or even Martel Alex that's you know their shields conflict a little bit but realistically Alex adds a little bit more of a punch to an actual tank rather than being the tank himself um Constantine is definitely worth talking about even though he doesn't have the defense tree he does have the support tree which is still pretty tanky when we take a look at it he regenerates a ton more rage than the defense tree and he also reduces the skill damage that he's taking he also reduces the skill damage he takes even more with loose formation and just in general the infantry tree is nice because you can come up here to get infantry health and hold the line for the 10 percent chance of reducing damage that you take by 20 percent so again overall very good uh, stats here as a defensive commander his active skill reduces the enemy attack by 40 percent for five seconds that's a very long time so roughly half the time the enemy is going to have their attack reduced by 40 percent so while that doesn't sort of uh, reduce the damage that Constantine takes it reduces the damage output capabilities of the enemy so that's really important there but also he does reduce the damage it takes by 10 percent and your nearby allies which is good so that includes your other units as well he also has 40 percent infantry health which is the best uh sort of infantry stat that you can have which is incredibly good for Constantine unfortunately that's sort of where uh his shine runs out now he does gain five percent defense on the expertise I don't think many players should be expertise in Constantine but as a 5511 he's a pretty solid choice for a tanky commander with very little options for outputting damage so just keep that in mind next let's take a look at Pakal who is a much newer commander than the ones we just talked about now Pakal is sort of the newest infantry tank that I think they really put into the game um you can see here he does have the infantry and defense trees so you can build him just like I showed my Richard earlier in the video but he does give you a very small shield here which is nice he also gives you 30 percent infantry health so almost as good as Constantine which is great he also reduces the damage you take by 10 percent and further reduces the damage you take if you're surrounded which is very very good because typically the way to take down a tank quickly is to surround them and here the enemy will be punished for doing that by further reducing the damage that they're dealing to him but also um 20 increased counterattack damage and reducing the amount of damage you take by five percent for all from all sources for three seconds after using an active skill so again the extra counterattack damage is a sort of a way to punish the enemy for uh, surrounding Pakal, which is uh, really unique and really cool next let's talk about CPO okay he's one of the newest infantry commanders in the game right now and I think some people feel that he is sort of tanky and I would say that he's more tanky than let's say um, Alexander for example uh, but he's not really a tanky commander he's dealing a ton of damage and debuffing the target which is nice but really he's giving you more attack than he is giving you health even though the 20 percent health is really nice and this is where his tankiness comes from on top of that there is a 50 percent chance that he reduces skill damage you take by 30 percent and gives a, a small shield which is very very good plus he has that support tree that we talked about on Constantine so I would say he falls in a similar ballpark as Alexander right he's not really a tank 
he's got a little bit better talents for tankiness than alexander but he doesn't have a shield that's as good as alexander but he does have health so he sort of falls in that middle ground there which is uh honestly good for cpo he he's going to see more use than most tanks because of that but i wouldn't necessarily consider him a tank just because of like the infantry health for example now I know we're talking about infantry but I think that Trajan is important to talk about here in the infantry section because depending on your civilization you probably will want to use mostly infantry units with your Trajan because they are like I said earlier typically seen as the most tanky units in rise of kingdoms now while he does increase the damage that he takes with his active skill which is kind of anti synergistic with the tanky idea he also gives you 20 percent defense 20 percent health outside of ter uh, alliance territory which is great he brings more troops to the battlefield which is so the, uh, sort of another artificial way of lasting longer in a battle but the fourth skill here is really where he shines as a tank and that is that the longer the fight goes on he can stack up to 60 percent defense which is absolutely insane saying this applies to any troop type not just infantry as a leadership commander and he's got that support tree which we talked about earlier is sort of tanky not as much as obviously the defense tree but it's nice to see on Trajan now if you have a 5511 Leonidas it's probably best behind a Guan so I wouldn't really consider Leo um a tanky commander even though he that that, that is his role um his role is sort of niche down to be add tankiness to Guan that's like sort of what Leonidas does uh, but of course he doesn't have to you could put Leonidas secondary to somebody like Constantine or somebody like Martel or Richard or something like that and he just adds more tank there if you wanted to do that um his active skill gives you small damage uh factor but it does give you 30 percent health which is nice 30 percent defense extra rage a little bit of a shield there and stacking extra damage over time so there's something to love about Leonidas let's talk about some free to play options you know because some of the commanders we talked about here are hard to get like Pakal or even Richard you have to spin on the wheel right which you should at least get him as free to play but we can talk about commanders like Julius Caesar and like Ragnar right those are two free to play gold key commanders that are definitely more on the tanky side now their talent trees are bad for tanky so you would want to use Caesar or Ragnar as a secondary to one of the commanders we've already talked about so for example a Charles Martel with Julius Caesar both of them 5511 or better would be a pretty tanky March for a free to play player especially in the early game when we're talking about some of the events that we're using them for so having that in your Sunset Canyon lineup for example will be good things like uh, arms training Lohar for example Golden Kingdom Soroli Crisis those types of things that's going to be the march that you could use if you wanted something tanky there reason being is that Caesar gives you a, a five second buff with 20 percent defense and 20 percent attack and 30 percent more damage plus 10 percent damage taken reduction here that further increases when you're under 60 percent you also bring a lot more troops to the battlefield here with 15 percent more which is higher than we saw with like Trajan for example and again Ragnar falls into the sort of the exact same camp as Caesar right he's dealing more damage but he's also reducing the damage he takes by 15 percent for four seconds and that goes up to five seconds um at 20 percent when he's expertise he also gives you more attack but more importantly he brings the extra 10 percent of troops to the battlefield and his relic in the museum gives you 20 percent troop defense and reduces normal attack damage taken by 10 percent this is universal not just for infantry it's for any troop type that you have so that's really good and again a reason why he's decent as a secondary because the primary can be whatever troop type you want while we are in the museum it's also important to talk about um caesar's relic right he gives you 10 percent more damage which is good if you look at Richard he gives you three percent counterattack damage which is just a very small way to punish the enemy for surrounding you and we can look at Martel as well who gives you 30 percent more stats five percent which being health he already has 20 percent health when expertise so it's very very good there and to round out the free-to-play infantry section here I do want to talk about Ethel fled now she's not seen as a tanky commander in her own right and in fact if you have an Ethel fled primary you will be swarmed down in the open fields she's more of a glass cannon as a primary than anything but if you have her as secondary she actually does apply a pretty powerful debuff to a, an AoE amount of targets which is good five targets uh fan-shaped area she does have a half circle AoE which is very very nice but 
having that powerful debuff on the enemy is not only going to uh, reduce the amount of damage that they're, that they're dealing to you but also increase the damage you're able to do to them for those two seconds as well and she has 20 percent counterattack damage taken reduction which is a, a little bit tanky right it's a little bit tanky again this is um for free to play players who are struggling to find a secondary for maybe their charles martel or their richard um ethel fled provides that in a way definitely not a, pro a first choice but something that you could do if you're really struggling to build a tanky march now we're going to move into cavalry here and obviously i want to start with saladin part of the reason i want to start with him is because if you look at what he's doing here right um he's reducing the healing and dealing single target damage factor he's giving you a lot of really important stats here for your cavalry in the 20 percent defense which is nice and he's taking 30 percent less skill damage and 20 percent reduced counterattack damage now if you look here right his first and third skills um don't need to be cavalry at all right these are not cavalry skills only his second skill is so realistically you could do a richard primary and a saladin secondary again is this a good pvp march not really right what it will do is actually slow down your target by an insane amount right you're gonna have slow down on saladin you're gonna have slow down on richard especially richard's expertise every 10 seconds reducing the march by 50 percent so a richard saladin is actually if you guys didn't know um i think the best march in the game for slowing a single target so that's worth noting but again putting 30% skill damage reduction and 20% counterattack damage taken reduction on a Richard is good plus single target damage factor I mean it's an interesting combo it's interesting from a tanky perspective beyond that if we're talking about cavalry right again we'd already discussed why Saladin is good from a skill perspective but his talents are also slightly more tanky than other cavalry commanders he doesn't have a defense tree but the support tree is good we've talked about that already you can go up to emblazon shield to reduce the skill damage you take by 12 percent that's actually pretty good on top of what he already has you've got some rage regeneration over here which is nice and you also get some cavalry health plus Plus, Buckler Shield reduces counterattack damage further by 9%. So we love to see those talents here on Saladin, making him probably one of the most, if not the most, a uh, tanky um, cavalry commanders in the game. One of the things you're going to note is that uh, there's not as many tanky marches um, or, 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 or commanders for the cavalry and the archers. So one thing that you could do would be a Saladin primary Richard secondary if you wanted to do all cavalry now that's kind of counterintuitive to the you know tanky build but uh Saladin does give more stats to cavalry than Richard does to infantry right so that's something to keep in mind another common combination here is also Ethel fled right Saladin and Ethel fled have a lot of synergy and is definitely a more tanky way to use Ethel fled especially if you want cavalry perhaps even more interesting is Saladin Takeda now Takeda is despite being a mobility commander pretty good as a secondary to a tank like Saladin why is that well for one he gives you 40 percent cavalry defense and he also has a small healing factor as well which is nice and his fourth skill gives him five percent skill damage taken reduction and a chance to reduce the normal attack damage and counter attack damage by 25 percent each which is really good all while applying a very powerful burn effect and dealing more damage to those burn targets if you have his expertise uh Takeda as a primary though really not that uh, defensive another interesting secondary would be Chandragupta right he's uh, as a primary not as tanky as Saladin because of that skill tree but he does give you a uh, 20% cavalry health which is very premium for cavalry and you take 5% less damage from other cavalry units which right now with a bunch of XY and Nevsky running around that's actually pretty good uh, speaking of Nevsky he is another sort of tanky commander uh, he doesn't have the same talent trees as Saladin which makes Saladin a little bit more tanky in that regard but he gives you 60% of stats as opposed to Saladin's 40 and you get 20% health 20% defense as well which is really really good for cavalry plus a 10% chance to further increase the cavalry health which as we mentioned before on Chandragupta is very very premium so there is a lot to love about Nevsky from a, a tanky perspective um you could do Nevsky primary if you wanted some some I guess more damage but realistically I would say probably if you had Saladin primary Nevsky secondary that would be if you're going from a tanky perspective that would probably be the best way to go if you were going to do Nevsky primary it's also worth noting that you could do Honda as a secondary to make that a little bit more tanky reason being he takes five percent less damage gives you ten percent higher troop capacity and with his expertise every single normal attack he takes 
30% less damage. Now that's only for the first 57 of them during an hour, but still that's good for events like Canyon, Golden Kingdom, things like that. Now, I also want to talk about Bertrand, right? The thing about Bertrand is he actually has the defense tree, which is the only cavalry defense commander, I believe in the entire game, which puts him in an interesting position. Now he does give you 10% cavalry health. It's not that much, but he does also take 5% less damage outside of Alliance territory. He also gives you a little bit of a healing factor and 20% cavalry defense, which is nice there. He also gets 5% reduced skill damage on his expertise. And again, combining that with the defense tree and going up the right side of the cavalry tree to take the 12% skill damage taken reduction. Um, you could probably build a pretty uh, tanky March with a Bertrand primary, possibly putting somebody like Saladin as secondary, or perhaps also Takeda, Chandra, Nevsky, all the culprits that we just talked about. Now let's talk about archers. And I think archers have the least amount of tankiness out of all of the different commander types. And that's why sometimes you see archer rallies just get swarm down because they just don't have that much tankiness but we can talk about the love of my life artemisia who does happen to have the defense tree and she gives you 20 percent defense 20 percent health which is really good for a really tanky commander building a talent tree for her i would probably go all the way up to desperate elegy and also grab these two if you want to uh, again mainly focus on tanking instead of dealing damage which you do probably want to exploit some of the damage she's outputting because her aoe is very strong but again this video is talking about just tanking okay you do want to grab the razor sharp and also you get some uh some health over here for archers so those are important to note pairing with artemisia you could of course put ramses ramses on his own is sort of tanky now again he does have the attack tree which isn't one of the trees that would be considered something that is tanky but if you look at his uh his skills here have some interesting stuff so he takes 30 percent uh less skill damage and you have a 10 percent chance to gain 40 percent defense and a little bit of healing factor which is nice so again with an artemisia primary she's actually going to provide all of the defensive talents whereas ramses is just going to add a little bit of that utility there as well which is cool you could also do a ramses uh primary with somebody like uh nebu for example nebu is a little bit tanky which is cool because he does have that 30 percent archer defense plus you have the chance of reducing the target's rage which means they might be outputting less skill damage which means you're going to take less skill damage which is very good and we do have to talk about amanatore as well she is a great primary for artemis because she is immune to silence when she's expertise which just kind of unlocks more damage out of Artemisia which is really really nice and reducing the target rage by 200 long cooldown on this but still very very nice you also get uh some nice archer stats here 20 percent archer defense and she has the support tree which is sort of tanky so that's good to know I guess sort of the last thing I want to talk about in this video is epic commanders that you could use uh to be tanky in either the very early game or as a free to play player, right? You may have a Charles Martel that's 5511. And you don't have any of the other legendary commanders in this game that I talked about that are also at least 5511, like Julius Caesar, for example. Um, so you can use Sun Tzu to add a little bit of tankiness to your Charles Martel. Um, he does AoE with Rage Regen, which is really nice, but he does reduce the damage you take by 10% and give you 10% more health, which is just really good for an epic uh, we also got to talk about cpo cpo is sort of like the epic version of julius caesar in a way you take 25 percent damage and deal 25 percent more counter attack damage for five seconds when his active skill goes off so as, as again as a secondary in something like lost canyon he's actually pretty good because he also gives you 10 percent more troops and when you get below 40 percent he does have a triggered healing factor as well so that's something to keep in mind finally now this is really just for canyon at this point although i guess it could technically be used in things like golden kingdom but matilda is deceptively tanky for a gathering commander she has the defense tree and she also gives you 30 percent health and 30 percent defense for your siege that's 60 percent of tanky stats there which is really really good it's also reducing the enemy attack by 15 percent, so they're dealing less damage during that time and you bring 15 percent more troops that's the highest troop capacity bonus out of any epic commander in the entire game now that does come at the cost of attack but again we're looking at a tanky march we're not interested in dealing damage with this it's just absorbing damage so i have seen players use something like a matilda joan or something like that to have a sort of tanky march in something like canyon i guess we 
we just got to talk quickly about equipment and like what equipment you want to be putting onto your tanky march and realistically the main thing you want to look for is your health stats okay so the gatekeeper shield is a great example for infantry of a piece that gives you a lot of health and especially when it's talented it's going to be ten and a half percent which is really really good if you can't get health on a particular piece you're going to want to go with defense that's going to be sort of the second best choice that you can pick for a tanky march so something like the gold helm of the eternal empire again for infantry is going to be very good but this does apply again to archers and cavalry if you're going to do a cavalry tanky unit for example you want as much cavalry health as you can get what that means is that if you look at something like the expedition war helm when it's talented it's going to give you eight percent cavalry defense so that's going to actually take priority over something like the abyssal visage which is going to give you maybe ten and a half percent cavalry attack so the numbers are close but again you want to focus more on health and defense even if it means taking slightly less stats but you can even look at something like calvin's hand which gives you four percent attack and one percent health so it does give you health which is what's most important but at the end of the day seth through seth's brutality even though it doesn't give you health it gives you defense is still going to generally perform better so again focus mainly health but if you can't get much of it focus on defense when we're looking at accessories I think the most easy accessories to get for most players are going to be things like Delane's amulet which reduces the counterattack damage you take which is great silent trial also a little bit easier than other accessories to obtain and it's going to reduce the rage of the target that's going to reduce the number of skills that they're able to fire off in a longer fight which means you're going to take maybe one less skill cycle or two less skills which is going to translate into having more units um ancient stratagems uh, is also a somewhat decent choice especially in something like canyon where you're going to have more troop capacity which just means more troops which is good if you have the lucky coin you can try the coin it's not the best accessory and it's extremely expensive so most players should not be crafting this but if you do have it this is sort of a you know a tanky piece that you could put as an accessory other than that the horn of fury is also going to be a good choice if you have somebody like richard for example where now you're just gaining more rage so you're going to fire off those heals faster or martel you're going to fire off the shields faster so those are some pretty obvious choices that you would want for accessories now i do just want to talk a little bit about tanky commanders in the pvp aspect right it seems to be the case that um if you have a super tanky march in a pvp scenario you may think that that's a good thing because well they'll just absorb all the damage while you deal damage to the other enemy units but the problem is that in open field fighting players get to choose who they sort of want to target so if you're in the open field and you see a richard or a charles martel you sort of know that like they're not as high of a target like yes you can get a really good uh, battle report and a really nice favorable trade if you see a Richard Martel and you swarm it down like you're good to go but the thing is like you really want to focus down like the Guan Yu's for example those are very prime targets to take down in the open field also if you see something like a Zhang Yu you want to get that out of there that's a huge threat and they're it's he's kind of a glass cannon right he can't really take that much damage if you swarm him down so the thing about having a super tanky march in the open field is that if it's left alone you're going to get a horrible trade with it and b you know players just sort of ignore it unless they're getting greedy for their own kills and so you know back in the day when like Ark of Osiris first came out having a super tanky march in the open field was good because players didn't really know how to address it like people didn't really know what the prime targets were in the open field they just saw Richard and they started attacking it was like why isn't it dying right that's sort of how things went but now it seems like there's not really a use for a super tanky March because there's no way to force your enemy or your opponent to attack that tanky March right so if you're in a game mode like Olympia for example you do have the ability to use a skill like taunt which forces enemies to attack your unit that you pick and you could pick your tanky March and then for the next couple of seconds it forces them to hit that target instead and then they'll have to switch back to whatever target they want to be hitting so it's cool in that game mode but we don't have something like that for like kvk for example right so it makes it really it puts tanks in a weird position where they just you know a full tanky march doesn't have a place in pvp necessarily speaking and so this has sort of led players to throw a tanky commander in with a non-tanky commander so again if you look at something like nebu with isong ye now i know this isn't like a super tanky march but nebu's responsibility here is bringing that 30 percent defense 
and uh, reducing the enemy rage if you look at something like saladin william right the, the reason that you like saladin as that primary is because of the support tree and also that he's a little bit more tanky so that's sort of the state that we're in right now with tanky commanders but i want to hear from you guys down below do you sort of wish that tank marches had more usability in rise of kingdoms again i feel like the meta for so long has just been maximum aoe damage that's been the open field meta like the more aoe damage you have in your five marches uh, the better pretty much and so you know while you're again trying to avoid sort of glass cannon marches like a you don't want like a guan yu with isong ye for example like on paper it would look like it does well because of the huge skill damage on both of them but it just dies so quickly so again I, I guess what i'm saying is like i know that there's sort of a role for tanking commanders built into marches but do you think that the tank role of a of full tanky units both primary and secondary has sort of just been forgotten i feel like there's just no use for it in pvp anymore and that feels kind of like a bummer like when every player is just focusing on all damage it, it's i don't know is, is that like boring i would love to hear from you guys in the comments section below and while you're down there make sure you subscribe to the channel again about 80 percent of you guys are not subbed to the channel and you can always unsub later click the thumbs up button it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace